Well, good morning, folks. Uh, as you're signing in uh, this morning, uh, it's good uh, to see you once again here in virtual Glendermont, although we are, of course, in the building once again. Looking down uh, another aisle there, you'll see some of the, the work still going on there, the scaffolding and, and so on around. It's been good to be able to come and to share uh, from the main building, um, although we haven't been able to, to meet together. Unbelievably, it's week nine uh, that we have been sending out these messages virtually. Uh, and I do trust uh, that uh, they are some sort of replacement uh, for you, your, your services, that you have been taking time uh, to come and to join us for worship, uh, and of course taking time to, to look uh, to God in these difficult and, and uncertain times. But uh, welcome to uh, our service here uh, this Sunday morning uh, from Glendermott Presbyterian. Uh, whether you've joined with us uh, on Facebook or on YouTube, whether you're joining later on in Drive 105 uh, or whether you're listening on CD or DVD at a later date. Um, it's good to have you with us. To say we can't meet physically but we are united in a far greater way, united in Christ so we are united in body, mind and spirit uh, regardless of distance. We are united with all believers across uh, the world. Just a few announcements uh, before we begin uh, our service this morning. I just want to say a big word of thanks to all uh, who have agreed to, to take part in our various services and the various elements of our service uh, here today. Uh, there'll be a few folk uh, doing our reading, uh, doing our intercessory prayers, and of course uh, we have our singers. We have a bigger group of singers with us this week, uh, so it's good uh, to have uh, everyone participate. Uh, we thank them for it. Uh, don't forget our, our children's message uh, at half past twelve. Uh, I trust the young people have been enjoying that and I encourage you once again uh, if you have young people in the house to, to take uh, just that short time uh, that we would normally spend here in the church but take that time uh, and spend it with them uh, and take time to, to watch the message and to sing their song with them. They are very much part uh, of our church family here. As I said, some might be listening on CD at a later stage uh, just to highlight again, if you know someone who could benefit from that CD ministry, uh, please let us know. We've also been trialling a number, a small number of DVDs uh, of the Sunday morning services. So if you know someone who might benefit from that, uh, they have a DVD player at home uh, rather than the internet and they would like still to watch uh, the service, uh, we'll try and provide that for them. And again, don't forget the broadcast on Drive 105 at 4 o'clock. Uh, this afternoon we, we thank continue to thank uh, Drive 105 for this great help to, to our ministry here in Glen Dermot. But we come uh, to worship God, we come to fix our, our eyes on God and of course as not what Paul continually tells us when he's writing to the church in Colossae he says fix your minds on heavenly things not on earthly things. Uh, those are words which are very pertinent to us in these days uh, as we struggle with what's going on in, in the earthly realm uh, that we look to the heavenly realm we look to God for the help the strength and the comfort uh, that we need but we're going to begin uh, our service with our first uh, piece of praise together as always I encourage you uh, to sing along with it it might seem strange singing in your own house uh, but join together unite uh, and let's worship God together you'll recognize the tune of this I'm not sure if you've sang this in church before but anybody from the, the Glendermott Valley area will know the tune in fact many across this country uh, will know the tune along the fucking side how lovely is your dwelling place O Lord of hosts to be let's worship God together <laughs> Oh, 
trust uh, you enjoyed that first hymn. I trust that you participated in it, that you sang along some wonderful words in it, and of course, a, a very familiar tune to us. Uh, but words, of course, which are very important, words which remind us of even the, even the sparrow finding a home, how important even the sparrow is to God. Uh, so how much more important are we? Isn't that what Jesus says? Uh, but let's, as we come to, to worship God together, let's just commit our time of worship to him. Let's, let's pray together. Father, we come again, what it is, what is in a very different uh, circumstance. But we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to even join in this way uh, to worship you. Lord, we recognize the difficult and uncertain times that we live in. But Father, we thank you of the certainty that we have in you. Lord, even though we're not joined physically here together, Lord, we are united in a far greater way. Or we are united in Christ. When we are brothers and sisters in Christ, when we have been saved by that amazing grace of God, we are united in ways that, well, this earth can never separate us from. And Father, we thank you for Jesus who has made that sacrifice for us. Lord, who has made that grace and salvation available to us through his blood shed on that cross. And yes, brings us that amazing privilege of being members of your family, being brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we pray that even across these airwaves, as we meet here today, or even if we meet later on and listen to this service, Lord, we pray that we would sense that unity that we have, that we would sense all that sense of community and family that we have here in Glen Dermot. Father, we thank you for each and every person who will listen to this service. Lord, we ask that you would speak to them, that you would bless them, Lord, that you would help them up, up and uphold them in these days. Lord, yes, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, to keep our eyes fixed on heavenly things. Because yes, we confess, Lord, as we live in these uncertain times, as we live in these difficult and even dangerous times, Lord, our focus can sometimes slip. But Father, keep us faithful as you are faithful to us. Keep us focused on you and your goodness. Father, we thank you for your love and your care for us. Yes, we thank you that you care for us even more than the sparrow in the air. Lord, that your love, your love goes way beyond what we could even imagine. So will you bless our time here together as we open your word, as we think about your word to us. Lord, speak to us. Let us hear your voice clear and resounding in our hearts today. So we commit our time of worship to you and ask for your blessing on each one. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to turn to God's Word. Uh, we said last week we were going to look at Psalm 23 over the, the, the two weeks. Uh, this week uh, our reading uh, is read to us by, by Elaine Robinson and we thank Elaine uh, for doing that. So let's open God's Word together. If you've got your Bible handy, open it up again to Psalm 23 and let's read this together. Psalm 23, this is God's Word to us. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Elaine, thank you once again for reading God's word for us. It really is a wonderful psalm, that, isn't it? We began to look at it last week, and we found some of the, the wonderful and assuring things that it has to say to us. Uh, it is, well, as Spurgeon called it last week, as we looked at this pearl of the psalms, so full of promise and assurance for us especially when we find ourselves in days of trouble and days 
of uncertainty. And of course, as I did say uh, there a moment ago when I said last week, we're going to look uh, at the closing verses of it uh, here together today, which hold uh, another three uh, amazing and remarkable promises of provision for us uh, when we're part of, of God's family. Of course, that was the main condition, wasn't it, to all of this making any sense at all? That was the one condition for this psalm to have any true meaning for us at all, that we be part of God's family, unless we are born again of the Spirit of God and know the wonder and joy of eternal security as a child of God, as a true member of his family. Then, well, as we saw last week, these, these words as as wonderful and amazing and as assuring they are, these words are just that, words. Yes, they might bring you some comfort as you read them because they're familiar to you. Yes, you might have some inkling of what they can mean. But that's it. There's no real depth to them for you unless you are a member of God's family, saved by the grace of God. So before we move on to our, our three promises for, for this week, I think it would be good uh, to just have a wee quick recap about what we thought about last week. Of course, the psalm opens, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And that was the key to unlock these nuggets that follow, isn't it? That sense of knowing God personally. And when we know God personally, then the promise is we'll not be in want. You will not lack rest, he says. Because the shepherd can provide that trust for you, that pasture for you, that, that peace and deliverance uh, from fear. That peace and deliverance from, well, what were Philip Keller's four things that kept sheep from resting properly. Fear, famine, friction and flies only the shepherd could provide those for the flock of sheep. And of course, it's only the chief shepherd, Jesus, who can provide all those things for us. You will not lack rest. He says you will not lack true life either. True life as God intended it to be. Life to the full, as Jesus referred to, right from now and into eternity. It means salvation. Isn't it? He's talking about salvation. You will not like life he restores your soul you remember that that illustration about the cast sheep rolling about in its back trying to, to help itself and of course do you remember the futility of that the futility of us trying to help ourselves because we need jesus because as with the rest only faith in jesus can fully restore your soul he's the one who came and sacrificed his life so that you might have life, that life to the full. When the Lord is, is your shepherd, you will not lack peace, you will not lack life, and you will not lack guidance. When we have accepted Jesus as our saviour and as our shepherd, God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us on his path rather than wandering off on our own. God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us uh, but to stop us from, from straying and, and wandering off like, like those aimless sheep under the care of the great shepherd friend. You will never lack rest and peace. You will never lack true life. And you will never lack guidance. That is the wonderful promises in those opening verses. And then we come to probably most, the most familiar verses of this psalm. Probably the one we all know and have heard. That, well, we've, I'm sure we've heard it being, being read over and over again. We've heard it preached on many a time because it's been read and preached on for centuries as we mourn the loss of loved ones. Even though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you're with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. As I said a moment ago, that verse is often used to comfort those who are, are dying or grieving. And yes, it's, it's quite appropriate to use it in that way. 
But like a lot of things we've been looking at here, it has a, a far greater uh, fur, further reaching implication than just that valley of the shadow of death. The actual word uh, is probably more accurately translated to mean death-like valley or, or, or deep shadow. That's why a lot of translations just talk about the darkest valley because it covers all those different times and all those different struggles that we have in life. Of course, death is no doubt one of those darkest times that we face in our existence in this earth. It's probably the one thing we fear the most. But this promise is about anything and everything that troubles us in life, up to and including death. And yes, including the fear and the anxiety that we have as we face the, the restrictions and the, and the uncertain times and all the difficulties that have been created with this COVID-19 virus. This verse is primarily about the, the shepherd's ability to protect those sheep in those different moments of danger. The imagery here is about when the shepherd leads the sheep from the lowlands where they've been for winter, up through the valleys to the, the rich pastures up in the mountains for summer grazing. It's about guiding, protecting them as they meander along the paths where, where wild animals lurk in the shadows, where the storms come along and, and sweep through the valley floors. So in those times, the shepherd uses what he has, his rod, to ward off evil. He uses it to, to direct the sheep as, as they walk. He uses the staff with his large crook in the end to support the sheep when they cross dangerous chasms. In other words, in life, the Lord protects us. He guides us and he supports us through these dark, difficult times. There's something really worth noting here too. The valley. Friends, is as much a place where the shepherd guides his sheep as is the rich green pastures. It is the shepherd who leads them through these dangerous times, but he is there with them as they go through them. And yes, the path of life has its valleys as well as those mountain tops of joy. But the promise here is that God is with us and he will lead us through them. Friends, if truth be told, Many of you will know the truth of what I'm going to say. Many of you will have experienced this as, we, as you experience those troubled times. Quite often, it's in those valleys, it's in those difficult times when we experience God's presence even more, isn't it? It's in those difficult times when we, when we experience God's help the most, isn't it? We're never more conscious of the presence of God than when we pass through the tough times. I mean, how often have, have you heard it? How often, well, indeed, have you said it yourself when you're faced, when you're faced with, with illness and yes, even the, the, the brevity of life, including your own, that someone up there is looking after you? But who was that someone? Do I really need to tell you? Well, as the New Living Translation puts it, that when the Lord is your shepherd, even when I walk through the dark valley, you're close to me, protecting me and comforting me. Not a wonderful way to put it. Even when I walk through the dark valley, you're close beside me, protecting me and comforting me. Even when I walk through these difficult times of COVID-19 and all the restrictions, you're close to me, protecting me, and comforting me. You will not lack safety, says the psalmist, because I am there to help you and protect you. Then he says, you will not lack provision. We've said this is a, a psalm of provision, as well as these great promises of provision that, as we've called these six things, provision is at the heart of the next promise. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Now, yes, there are some differing opinions about this illustration, that it has this sense of, of a householder welcoming people to a banquet or the like. Yes, that could be God welcoming us to the, the house that he has prepared for us. But for now, I prefer to keep with the image of the shepherd. Again, Keller, the, the shepherd turned pastor, sees this uh, as the shepherd preparing the, the land and the pasture for his sheep, providing that good pasture for them. It's about that constant preparation for the provision of his flock. The words have that sense of ongoing, continual and constancy of care for the flock. Of course, a good shepherd will prepare the pasture before he takes the sheep to it, won't he? He'll prepare the ground, yes, but he'll also remove hazards and deal with any predators. The ancient shepherd used a mixture of olive oil and spices along with sulfur to protect the sheep from insects to promote healing. It builds on the imagery of God being with us helping us, protecting us through all the circumstances of life, doesn't it? Ties with keeping the flock free from Keller's four Fs again, doesn't it? Fear, famine, friction and flies. The shepherd does the preparation to provide for his sheep. Yes, of course, oil in the Bible often refers to the joy and joy comes when we are free from all those things. Joy comes uh, at our cup overflows, says the psalmist. Provision, you will not lack provision when you are a member of the great shepherd's flock. And the last provision here for today is a wonderful to keep our minds fixed on as we struggle with all that life throws at us. We began thinking about fixing our eyes on heavenly things and here we go, here it is. Whether it's the restrictions on our life because of the virus, whether it's because of the worry and anxiety about work and the future, this is the promise. This is about the ultimate future of the child of God. This is where we keep our eyes focused on. Because the shepherd says here, you will never lack a heavenly home. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you think that's a right and appropriate place to finish? The flow of the psalm has been a journey. The flow of life is a journey with all its ups and its downs, with all its joys and its sorrows. The worries and the troubles, but the delights as well. That's real life, isn't it? But the end of the psalm is where the focus of our journey is all about. It's the ultimate help and assurance we have, isn't it? That this world is not all that there is. There is life beyond all that goes on in these earthly realms. The world is not our home, as the old country song put it. We're just passing through. And what lies beyond us in this life has everything to do with your answer to the first question that the shepherd posed. Is the Lord your shepherd? If the answer is yes, amazing, brilliant, then we can look forward to going to the home prepared for us by God in those heavenly realms. Amazing. But if the answer is no, friend, well, that's a whole different story. If you think that this life is all that there is, you've been badly misled. Because the Bible tells us that, that life is eternal for us all. Every single one of us will live into eternity. But there are two destinations 
in eternity and only two. Yes, one is of comfort and joy in heaven. And the other is of torment and sadness in hell. The psalmist is encouraging us to look to the first one. To that place where Jesus says he was going to. To prepare that place for those who would follow him. That place where he would come back one day from to take us to be with him. Of course he reminds us how to get there doesn't he? He says you know the way to where I've gone to be. You know the way to where I've gone to be with my father. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. When we've acknowledged our own sinfulness, when we've repented of our sins and put our faith and trust in Jesus as sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, when we have that personal relationship with God, then this promise of those closing words of the 23rd Psalm should bring us a great comfort and an amazing hope in the tough times on that journey through life. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me, is what we opened this service with, wasn't it? We'll be closing with the words of this psalm, with the challenge of the chorus resounding from our lips. And I will trust in you alone. Friend, will you? Will you trust in him even today? Will you come to know the shepherd and know this this wonder of provision, of love, of care, of assurance, of help and hope that you can have in this life and into eternity? Let me pray with you. Let's, Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for the, well, these amazing words of yours are given to us by the psalmist here, this wonderful psalm of promise and provision, uh, of hope uh, and promise that you'll be with us, Lord, in every circumstance. Father, we pray for each and every one listening to this message today. Lord, we pray that if they haven't yet put their faith and trust in you, or that this be the day that they would do so, or that they might know the comfort that this psalm can truly bring them, that these words won't just be words for them, but they will be something which touch their heart and reassure them and help them along the way. Father, we thank you for the peace, the rest, the provision, the life that we can have through Jesus. So Lord, just speak to us today. Speak to each one of us, comfort us, bring us that hope to our hearts that we so much need in these days. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. going to turn to worship once again our next hymn is another little surprise for you we have our virtual praise group again Uh, and when we think of all that's been provided for us what else could we do but sing of god's glory to god be the glory great things he has done so love to the world that he gave us his son let's listen to the words uh, from our virtual praise group uh, once again let's worship god together sing along if you can
Well, thank you to uh, our praise group for that. Thank you to Mark uh, for, for putting it all together. It's great to have all these people uh, willing and able to do all these things. Uh, we're going to come in, in prayer once again together. We're going to take time uh, to come in our prayers of intercession. Uh, this time we're going to be led uh, by Ruth Thompson. Thank you, Ruth, for leading us in prayer. But let's, let's just bow, let's still ourselves before God, and let's come to him in prayer. Let's pray. Let us pray. Gracious and he loving Heavenly Father, thank you that despite the circumstances we meet in, it is a privilege to worship you and bring your prayers to your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for the beauty of your creation around us. And in this time of lockdown, may we take time to appreciate it. We pray for those who are listening to worship through this wonderful means of technology. Lord, continue to speak to them through your word, praise and prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for the testing and tracking of COVID-19. Lord, enable the development of systems that help combat the pandemic and permit greater relaxation of lockdown measures. We pray for our key workers. Continue to keep them safe. We think especially of those in our church family. May they know the shelter of your arm around them. Lord, for those struggling at present, should it be through grief, illness, worry, mental health issues, May they know your never-ending grace and constant support to their needs. We pray for our children, Lord, who are struggling with this situation. May they continue to know your guidance, direction and peace at this time. For parents juggling homeschooling, home life and work life, may they be assured of the amazing job they are doing. We pray for our minister as he continues to reach out your word to our families here in Glendermott. Lord, keep him and his family safe during this time. And in this moment, God of the future, for such a long time we have lived without hope. Who needed it when our busy, distracted lives kept us living only for the present and provided ready escape from reality? Now we do, because frightening times have unnerved us. Death has a new inescapability about it. Our deepest insecurities are surfacing, and the silence we find hard to bear gives us no place to hide. Yesterday's comfortable certainties have given way to today's panic. Tomorrow's great unknowns darken our horizons. We grasp for something solid, two slow spinning minds, soothe storm-tossed hearts. And we have this hope, an anchor for our souls found in Jesus, secured for us in heaven, able to steady the ship, sufficient to bear us to an eternal shore. Help us to know and grow in it in our own lives. May we show it and sow it as we move among others that the world may rediscover safety, security, serenity in you. God of hope, in this moment, fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in you, that we may overflow with hope. And by power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you uh, for leading us in prayer. We're going to close our service now in our last piece of praise. Uh, I did mention earlier we we're going to close uh, with the words of the 23rd Psalm. We're going to sing uh, that Psalm 23 together. It's the, the newer version uh, with the little chorus that I intimated at. The Lord's my shepherd. Let's worship God uh, together. <laughs>
folks, thank you for joining with us here in Glendermott today. I, I trust you are all keeping well and you will keep safe in the days that lie ahead. Keep safe, keep looking after each other, keep trusting in God. But let's just close in, in a word of prayer together. And we will, as we have been doing, close uh, with uh, our little prayer, God of love uh, and light. Uh, but let's, let's close in, in a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you. Uh, for this time once again to come and to unite in prayer together. Lord, we thank you that you have presence yourself with us. Lord, we thank you for your word where you have spoken to us here, even today. And Lord, we pray for your blessing on each and every one. Lord, keep each one safe and indeed worry and anxious free. Help us to trust in you for all things. And so we unite in this prayer together. God of love and light, in this time of fear, give us your peace. In this time of isolation, give us your presence. In this time of sickness, give us your healing. In this time of uncertainty, give us your wisdom. In this time of darkness, shine your light upon us all. In Jesus' name. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of us now and forevermore. Amen. See you again next week, folks. Goodbye. Keep well. Keep safe. Keep trusting.